So this chapter is where things start to pick up and really get moving again, and then we kind of have that really neat oh shit moment at the end that, uh, that certainly I didn't see coming, so very, very cool stuff. One Piece, Chapter 243, Trial. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the epic and awe-inspiring Tale, the mind-bending tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw us with uh, the Straw Hats, uh, really pretty much primarily Luffy, uh, going against and, and just knocking the crap out of all the white berets and uh, and pretty much saying, hey, listen, we're not, we're not paying you shit. We're not following your rules. We don't care what your deal is. Get the hell out of here. Um, and the chapter ended with them being labeled as Class 2 Criminals. And, uh, and, th and that's how things kind of left off. And the last few chapters have really been um, a little bit on the low-key side, just kind of building this whole world with some of these characters. Some have been introduced, some have not. Um, and really, it, uh, it it's kind of just laying out. It's, you know, it's putting the silverware out, you know what I mean? Getting everything, getting, setting the table you know, for the, for the meal that's to come. So, um, But anyway, we pick up right where we left off on the beach. And, um, and, you know, and of course, like I said, the Straw Hats have defeated uh, <laughs> very, very handily the, the White Berets. And, uh, and it's kind of funny because we see um, Konus and Pagaya kind of standing off away from them, explaining to them about how now they're class two criminals and this and that. Blah, blah. You know, they're like, why are you standing so far away? And it's because they don't want to be associated, I'm sure, with these these criminals, right? Uh, so anyway, so Nami goes and, and <laughs> Luffy says, yeah, why'd you have to come back? And Nami's like, what? He's like, yeah, why'd you have to come back from that place that we're not supposed to go to? We were coming to look for you <laughs> and go on an adventure. And she's like, what? And she just starts flipping. She's like, I'm not going on a damn adventure. I'm not, you know, just going nuts. So anyway, they decide, um, they, well, they wind up talking briefly with Konus and, uh, because Nami and Usopp and stuff, they just, they want to get the hell out of there. You know what I mean? Now that they've been labeled as these criminals, what's the point in being there is kind of their thought. And, uh, and they say, well, I don't even know how we get back down to the White Sea, you know, um, or back down to the Blue Sea, right? I have no idea, you know. So Conus explains about how it's very perilous. You first got to go down to the, the next level, that mid-level, the, the White Sea. And, um, and then you have to go and, and go all the way to the far end of it, to the eastern end, to Cloud's End, um, before you can get down. It certainly sounds like a long and perilous journey because she says you have to cross this entire White Sea. And, you know, they were just on that White Sea briefly and they were attacked by that being that was obviously much stronger than them. At least at the time, anyway, because uh, Luffy and Zoro and Sanji were catching their breath and kind of getting acclimated to the thin air. But uh, so anyway, so we find out that that's that's certainly the way that they're going to have to get down, or at least one of the ways. That's that's the way that Konus mentions. Um, but of course, you know, Luffy's not having any of that. Luffy wants to be on an adventure, wants to go on an adventure, and uh, and, and they talk about how you know basically these. Uh, oh, also too, uh, Kami, I, I know was you know changed from God to not offend anybody, and, and vassals, which I don't even like saying. I guess was changed from priests. I have no hang-ups about any of that stuff, so it seems like the common way of saying is, is referring to Kami or God as God, I guess, and then vassals as priests. So these four priests of his, lieutenants, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, we find that that, uh, that pretty much they're going to have to, they're, they're probably going to wind up having to get fought very soon, I'm assuming it at some point. Uh, so anyway, they decide they're going to go and they're going to set off and they're going to actually just, they're going to, I guess, go to, to Godland, right? And so Luffy's like, we got to get, get the ship ready to set sail. And he asks Pagai, he says, can we have, you know, your food that you still have uh, that, you know, that you were giving us or whatever that we were in the midst of eating, what have you. And Pagai says, yeah, sure, no problem. Usopp asks for some parts, spare parts for the ship, right? So Usopp, Sanji, and Luffy go up to the house while Robin, Chopper, and Nami, and Zoro are, are getting the ship ready to, uh, to, to disembark, right? And uh, so they're up at the at the house, and it's kind of it's funny because you got Sanji over here like color coordinating things because the presentation is very important, and that's something that uh, I've mentioned before. I can cook, and my wife can cook. However, hers just looks good and tastes good, and mine just tastes good uh, because I'm not really big on the presentation of things, and it is it's very important. Sometimes just the way the food looks just like mentally it prepares you and makes it taste better. It's really a weird thing, but anyway. Uh, so he's sitting there, he's preparing and color coordinating things and whatnot. And Konus is like, oh my God, that's nice. And you know, that's so beautiful. And he's like, this is for you. <laughs> and he's like, I made a bento box just for you. And he uses some pickup line about how she's so heavenly and angel. It's heavenly and angelic, you know. 
Um, and then he's, you know, setting everything else up for Robin and Nami. Usopp goes and is talking with Pagaya, and he's like, are you the ship's carpenter? And he's like, no, I'm the ship's sharpshooter. He's like, but we don't have a carpenter, and, and I pretty much handle everything. I'm kind of like the second captain. They call me Captain. <laughs> and he's just Usopp with his bullshit, you know. But anyway, all of a sudden, uh, they wind up going in, and somebody says, you know, hey, what, what the hell's going on with, uh, with, you know, with the Going Merry with the ship? And, uh, and Sanji looks out and everything, and then you go and you see the ship, and then the next thing you know, you see Sanji with his eyes, like, popping out of his head. He's like, Nami's putting on a t-shirt, <laughs> you know, covering up the, the bazoongas in her bikini top that she had going, you know, uh, prior to that. And But that's not what's actually happening. We see in the next page, which I thought was kind of cool and, uh, and worth showing, we see the uh, the Lobster Express over here, and it uh, it says, you know, says God on his forehead. So the Lobster Express goes and comes and comes popping up out of the, the sea, and, uh, and, and has them on it, right? So then you got Zoro going, and he's like, you know what, everybody just jump ship, right? Well, <laughs> first of all, that's not going to work out because you got two Devil Fruit users uh, that are going to sink like rocks, that being, <laughs> you know, uh, Robin and Chopper, and, Us or, and, and Usopp's not even on the ship, and so Nami's going to have to go and try to drag them to shore. But then they go and they look, and there's all these, like, huge fish or whatever, huge sky fish. Uh, they look like these, well, and obviously the sky fish that we saw here, let's show there, too. There's a ton of huge sky fish out there coming for them, so they're like, no, we can't even do that. These things are coming for us, and anybody jumps ship, they, they've got us trapped is what they do. They've, they've got us trapped. Um, so what they wind up doing is they go, and I mean, there's not much they can do. They're, they're carried away on the ship, um, you know, and, and just and, and carried off away. And uh, and then you know Zoro even says he goes yeah that's genius he goes it, they, you know they just they just bring us to Godland right they don't even have to worry about coming hunting us down or whatever you know just have these creatures because they we find out that the lobster you know express and everything like that it's uh, it's one of you know one of his priests or one of his vassals of, of the god you know this this NL so it's kind of neat to see how the whole thing transpires and then they just go and get and get dragged off you know so then you go and you see back. In the in the house in Pagaya's house, you see, um, you know, who, who's left? Uh, Sanji and, and Luffy and and uh, and uh, Usopp, of course. And they're like, "Oh man, what the hell are we gonna do in this and that?" And then, you know, uh, Pagaya goes and explains to him something about how the heaven, heaven's judgment, heaven's punishment. Uh, they're being taken to the northeast corner of uh, of Godland of the of the Godland area, and uh, and that's where there's some kind of sacrificial altar. And he's like, what the hell? You know, and they're like thinking, man, sacrificial? What are you talking about? You know, and then, and then he got, uh, <laughs> of course, you know, Sanji doesn't care about anything but the women, you know. And he's like, they're going to sacrifice my Nami and Robin, you know. Um, so anyway, he winds up explaining to him, though. He goes, yeah, you know, when, when you're labeled as this type of criminal, you know, you're, you're there's, there's only two ways out of it. You're either made a sacrifice and killed, um, you know, at least that's what it sounds like, or you have to, like, complete a, uh, a trial or a challenge, right? So, and then he goes and he explains something about how it's not the them that are in trouble, it's you because you're the ones that were left behind or something like that. So then we get Luffy, who's very simple-minded with things towards the end of the chapter, but you got, you got to love him, though, because once everything gets explained to him, he's basically just like, uh, okay, so now we got to go, you know, because he explains where it is, sacrificial altar, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Usopp goes, because they know they got to go there now, so Usopp goes and pulls out that old map that they had, that they found uh, from the 200-year-old galleon and starts pointing out things. And he explains about how, uh, Pagaya explains how you can't just sail uh, to the sacrificial altar. It actually has to be walked to. And he's explaining about how on the map there's not actually this milky road that's on there. There's hundreds of these milky roads uh, that go in there, like the man-made cloud tunnels that take them to different parts or to different, you know, portions of the island. So he's basically kind of giving them directions on how to get there, uh, which I thought was, you know, was pretty cool. And then, so then Luffy's just funny, man. He explains about the, the priests and everything like that, you know. And then Luffy just so simple-minded. So then we just have to clobber those guys uh, that Nami told us about, right? <laughs> you know, because he explains about how, you know, the four priests are so strong and this and that and blah, 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 you know. So it's real simple, you know. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, of course, you know, Bagaya is explaining, you know, and then above them in the upper yard, um, you know, that the god Enel awaits. So uh, definitely kind of a cool chapter. I thought it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and really, you know, I guess my chapter question is going to be, what do you think about these parts in the, and it happens in every arc, but what do you think about these parts where uh, the group splits off in the different types of team-ups they've done? In Alabasta, obviously, we saw groups split up into different teams. Um, I mean, in Whiskey Peak, for instance, you know, uh, Luffy, everybody was asleep except for Zoro for most of it, then Nami woke up, then Luffy, and it's kind of neat to see these different dynamics, in my opinion, of the different groups and the different teams and how they can act uh, alone or with one or two counterparts, even if they don't get along like a Zoro and 
Sanji? Can they work together for the greater good? Uh, so that's my chapter question is what do you think about, um, you know, when, when Oda or really any author in any type of manga or comic or, or anything like that goes in and splits off uh, the group, the main group, I guess you would say, what do you think about, uh, you know, when when they do that? Is that something that uh, that you like or is that something that you're just, you can't wait for them to all to be reunited and get back together? Leave your answer uh, to that uh, question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. I still really love Usopp's five-ton hammer. Very cool, very creative.